This is episode 68 with Nathan Hirsch. Welcome to the Quarter Life Comeback Podcast, the show that empowers you to become the hero of your life's journey. With your host, Brian Tier. Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another episode of the Quarter Life Comeback Podcast, episode 68 today, and I'm really excited to be speaking to Nathan Hirsch. Now, before we get into the episode, a shout out to today's sponsor, which again is Nomad Accelerator, the first ever in-person bootcamp designed to teach participants how to become successful online entrepreneurs and digital nomads. The event is taking place in Barcelona and participants will have one-on-one access to some of the top online entrepreneurs in the game today. You can find out more at bootcamp.nomadaccelerator.com and make sure you use the checkout code QLC to get $250 off. Now back to today's episode and Nathan Hirsch has been an entrepreneur in the e-commerce industry since 2009 and has grown into a leading expert in the field with experience managing multi-million dollar businesses. He started by selling textbooks out of his college dorm room and hired his first employee before he was legally allowed to drink. Nathan then founded and grew an Amazon store to reach $4 million in sales before moving into the COO role. After deciding that there must be a better way for e-commerce companies to hire remote workers, Nathan founded FreeUp, a rapidly growing company providing remote workers for hundreds of clients. Now in this episode, you're going to learn, can anyone become an entrepreneur? how to decide which business idea to work on, how to find a partner for your business idea, how to share your idea without it getting stolen, how to test your idea before going all in, the essential habits for young entrepreneurs today, and how to balance working hard with a freedom-based lifestyle. As always, you can get the links and resources we mentioned in this episode at bryantier.com slash 068. But for now, let's go hang out with Nathan. Welcome back, everyone, and a big welcome to today's guest. I'm speaking to Nathan Hirsch. Nathan, welcome to the Quarter Life Comeback. Hey, Brian. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no, we connected via uh, Jennifer. So, Jennifer, if you're listening to this, uh, shout out to you. But um, I'm really excited to be speaking to you today because entrepreneurship is a, a topic that I'm really passionate about. And it, at the same time, it's it's something that I haven't really spoken about much with a guest on the show um, apart from one or two episodes and you're obviously perfect person to speak to about this so I'm excited to get into that but for people listening who don't know who you are why don't you tell us a little bit about um, what it is that you do and sort of your quarter life story yeah sure so I've been selling online for over eight years I actually started off as a broke college student um, looking for extra beer money on the side and I started buying and selling people's textbooks I was pretty frustrated at the bookstore that they were giving me pennies on the dollar um, and before I knew it I had lines out in my college dorm room um, buying people's books and that eventually led me to Amazon because you don't sell books for very long um, without without learning about Amazon and I became addicted to it and I really wanted to have success on it but I knew that I didn't want to sell books um, they were kind of heavy. I didn't see a lot of potential. I thought that they, by now they would be outdated and everyone would be on their iPad, although that hasn't exactly happened. Um, and so I started experimenting with drop shipping from different vendors and I became really good at it um, where I would buy – I would list products that I didn't have. I, what people would order from me, I would buy products from a vendor, get it shipped right to the customer and I would make the difference. And eventually I was – Actually, I had a lot of success doing that, and before I knew it, I was running a multi-million dollar business out of my college dorm room, um, learning a lot, making a lot of young entrepreneurial mistakes, making a lot of really good business decisions as well. And that really got me into hiring. I started hiring my friends. I eventually graduated and uh, moved to Florida and opened up an office and learned about the Odesk and the Upworks of the world and hiring remote workers. Um, And I quickly found that I was spending 50 plus percent of my time just on the HR stuff from going through resumes and applicants and multiple rounds of interviews and turnover. And it was very frustrating for me. So I had the idea to come up with FreeUp to really make a faster way to hire where instead of posting a job on different websites that are all job boards, I could just tell a company what I wanted and they would just introduce me to the right fit. And that's really what we've done with FreeUp um, as we've grown in the past few years. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. So this was like your first real entrepreneurship uh, endeavor 
straight out of college. Well, while you were still in college. Yeah, I mean, I before that, I did some internships. I was a, the head umpire for my town. Um, I opened up a lot of failed lemonade stands, but this was my first <laughs> entrepreneurial, a real entrepreneurial adventure. Yeah, that's amazing. I, I was going to ask if you'd have any uh, failed businesses, but you know, if it's just lemonade stands, that's not too bad. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say, I mean, I'm fortunate the first business that I started really took off, although there were a lot of different levels to that business and a lot of trial and error that went into it, selling different types of products and not selling it, and eventually settling on a lot of baby products and home goods, um, which was kind of just fluky um, before I actually got to having a lot of success. Yeah, cool. So it, it kind of evolved over over time. Um, so it's, it's pretty much a, an FBA business, right? No, it's actually no FBA. It's only drop shipping. Okay. Cool. I, I don't know too much about it to to ramble on about that, but uh, yeah, I, I know some some other people that are doing that. So that's pretty cool. Um, I want to ask you then: Can anyone become an entrepreneur, or is it you know is it a certain type of person? <laughs> Yeah, so I think anyone can. I, I know a lot of people, a lot of my clients that I talk to, they went from their 40-hour week jobs or they're 20 years into their career and then they open up a side business and they're having a lot of success. Um, a lot of it is having the same qualities and, and the same values and the same goals. Um, if you go into it very stubborn, like this is what I want to build, this is how I'm going to do it, you usually don't have a lot of success. You have to be open-minded. You have to want to do trial and error. Um, I actually just launched a book called Free Up Your Business, um, 50 Secrets to Bootstrap trapping million dollar companies. And we talk a lot about um, having the right mindset going into it and being open to ideas and feedback and being able to turn down a different path when the right time comes. And a lot of people don't do that. And they also don't have the work ethic um, or maybe even the talent to back it up. Um, so if you do, if you are passionate about something and you're willing to go into it with the right mentality and you're willing to work hard, I think anyone can do it. Mm, and it sounds like another important aspect is like not being attached to the final the final outcome of like what your business looks like. Like you kind of have to let it grow and evolve. Yeah, I mean, if you told me when I was 21 that I was going to be selling baby products while I was in college, <laughs> like I wouldn't believe you. I, I was in class listing products, getting a lot of weird looks. Um, it it kind of just fell into my lap, but it also fell into my lap because I tried selling CDs and different video games and all this other stuff that didn't work, and I eventually found something that did. Yeah, something that, that I struggle with is I come up with a lot of cool ideas, which I mean, I'm sure that's part of being an entrepreneur is identifying things that could work. But then I find that because I have so many ideas, I struggle to focus on, on one of them and, and decide which one to, to work on. Um, what kind of advice do you have for someone that, that struggles with that kind of thing? Yeah, I mean, it's tough. I like to look at things as the opportunity more more than the idea. So the the idea might be fun for you. It might be something you're passionate about. But what does the market actually like? Is there a need for your product? Um, if you're really unsure about that, ask other people, get feedback, do different surveys, do different research. Are there other competitors doing the same thing? Um, one thing I really like about FreeUp is at this time, there's no one else really doing what we're doing. Um, all the other marketplaces out there are job boards. No one has that hands-on approach. No one has our turnover guarantee where if the worker quits, they cover all retraining costs. Um, and, and it's just something different. It's almost like disrupting the market where if you create another bakery next to four other bakeries, you're, you're not going to have the same type of success, even if you're a really good baker. So they kind of looking at those outside variables before you make a decision. And it's sort of shifting from, I mean, I guess the essence of being an entrepreneur is you identify things that people need and you create a solution. And um, I guess it's, yeah, shifting from from uh, more of a selfish point of view of like, this is what I want to create to this is what people need the most. Exactly. And remember, you're not going to get there by yourself either. You're going to need other help, whether it's mentors or um, friends, which I don't I don't necessarily um, advise you to hire, but you're going to have to hire other people. There's going to be other people that will help have to help you get there. And are you able to actually get access to those people? Are you are other people going to be as passionate about it as you are? Are they going to be able to commit the same hours and time? Do you have a budget for it? There's just so many other factors that go into it besides the, whether the idea is actually good to you. Yeah, how would you like if if someone wanted to identify or or bring on a partner to help sort of co-found their idea? How do you find someone that that could be on the same page? 
Yeah, so finding someone is, is tough. It is a lot of trial and error and going through people. What I've found is you want to hire someone that's not – or you want to partner with someone that's not exactly like you. Um, I work with Connor. Connor was one of my um, first hires. You can find him at ConnorGillivan.com. He's a great writer. Um, and he I hired him in my business law class randomly. He's been my business partner for over eight years. But the thing about Connor and I is we're totally different people. We like different things. We're good at doing different things. But we have the same core values and the same core beliefs. We we believe in treating people well. We we want to grow our business. We're very dedicated to it. We're both workaholics, um, stuff like that. Um, but in terms of talent, he's a much better writer than me. I'm much better at creating processes and systems and talking to people on the phone. And so we complement each other very well. And I've seen a lot of people fail because they'll have two partners that do the exact same thing and there's overlap and who should do what and how do you divide stuff up and who's really in charge. Where as with Connor and I, we know who's in charge of what. We don't step on each other's toes. We're very open to ideas and feedback and sharing advice. But I know that I'm not going to go to the free up blog and just start messing things up for him. And he knows that he's not just going to start randomly contacting clients and and, and finding out their needs, which is my role. So. Yeah. Um, just finding that perfect fit and someone that you can really work with at a high level. And have you ever had a, a fear of like, well, if I share this idea with people, then someone else might do it? <laughs> <laughs> that was my fear for the first four years of being an entrepreneur. I was totally paranoid. Um, I, I, the people I would hire, I would only teach them to do a few small things. Um, I wouldn't give them the big picture. Even Connor, it took him a year before he really knew what kind of what the work he was doing was actually <laughs> contributing to the company. Um, but that's something that I've really gotten away with. I've realized that by tell, by sharing that information, you actually get a lot more out of them. Most people percentage-wise care a lot more about providing for their family and contributing to your business and being part of something great than they do about stealing your ideas. And if you have a solid business, it, like I, it would be really hard for someone to steal free up, um, watch someone go do it. But <laughs> it's, it's kind of – there's got to be proprietary stuff for you starting your business or else you don't really have a business and eventually someone's just going to copy it anyway yeah i love that so we've we've spoken about like how to find a partner and how to pick um an idea for for a project to start if uh if someone's got that idea now and they, they maybe found someone to work with how can they test that idea with sort of minimal time and money spent and know if it's actually something worth putting more more attention on <laughs> Stay away from family. Um, family <laughs> tends to tell you that all your ideas are great. I know my parents are super supportive, but I feel like I could show up on the doorstep with the worst idea ever and they'll be like, honey, you'll do great. Um, but I would definitely talk to people that in your life that can be objective. Go talk to a business, so other business owners, a mentor, um, network with people on LinkedIn, ask people to sit down with a cup of coffee and just go over it and, and take their honest feedback. And I've had plenty of people tell me, Hey, this is a terrible idea. And I've, in my mind, I'm like, wait, thinking of this logically, it's really not. And I'll go out and do it. But just getting that feedback, um, it will really help you as an entrepreneur if you're unsure. And at the very least, you might think of things or think of ways to tweak things that will really help push you forward. And in terms of like validating it in the market? Yeah, I mean, for me, it's always been trial and error. If I list a product and it doesn't sell and I tweak it and it doesn't sell and I tweak it again and it doesn't sell, I'm moving on to another product. And mm -hmm. if I if I start getting some success, then I'm and then I figure out why and I try to um, replicate the same thing over and over again. Um, my biggest thing is I try to get the minimum viable product out there as fast as possible. If you looked at the FreeUp website <laughs> two years ago, it was garbage, but I at least got it out there as quickly as I could so that I could start gaining a client base and and get. Getting small revenue and then taking that revenue and investing it back into the company. I think a lot of people, they'll spend two years planning their business and launching it. And then by then, it, it's kind of outdated. And maybe they, re, they if they had launched it, they would have realized that they should have gone in a different direction to begin with. Yeah, there's a saying that I've heard of like, if you're not embarrassed by your first version, then you've launched too late. <laughs> Exactly. I could not agree more. Yeah. And that's a theme that a lot of guests have come back to, whether it's talking about like career or entrepreneurship or anything else. It's like, just get started. If you have an idea for something, um, like just take that first step and kind of take things from there. Um, yeah, so I mean, yeah, Karen. Yeah, I was just gonna say failure is not really an option. If when I if you want to start a new business, just work until you get something out there. And, and that's really the mentality you have to have. And there shouldn't be anything that sets you back. Mm -hmm. If 
so we spoke about like how to test if people actually want the thing that you're thinking of creating on the other at the end of that like what if we have a project and it feels like it might be time to move on and pursue something different like how do you know when you've reached that stage yeah, I'm probably the wrong person to ask that. <laughs> um, I've been really fortunate, and I can't even take all the credit for it. I've been, I've been surrounded with um, everything from mentors to great parents to um, just great workers that have really contributed to the success. Um, but I haven't I haven't had to like shut down a company because um, it just wasn't selling. Um, so I might not be the best person to ask that question. <laughs> yeah, too too successful. Uh, all right, so. Let's let's shift it to this then. If uh, if someone had to ask you, um, what are the sort of essential habits for a young person to be an entrepreneur today? What would you say those are, both both professionally and personally? I wake up early and I work really hard. I, I probably wake up earlier than anyone that I know. I, I work on weekends. I um, have a team that's incredibly committed. I surround myself with people that have a positive attitude and that want to be success and that uh, successful and that aren't jealous and that um, want to be a part of something great or at least um, <laughs> at least contribute in some way. And that's really, I think, what the key is. I think a lot of people, they'll surround themselves with the wrong type of people, whether it's friends or even family that hold them back or the people they work with have a negative attitude or they're just in it for the paycheck um, or their communication is terrible um, or they, they kind of treat it more like a hobby where they're they're working 20 hours a week on it and they're not willing to take that extra step or they would rather sleep in on a Sunday or that, that client issue comes in on a Saturday night and you'd rather be hanging out with friends. So um, just really doing whatever it takes to to take it to get to the next level mm, yeah something that's like something that i often think about is if you want to create like a, a freedom or lifestyle type business um how do you balance like the the working hard in the early stages with you know having that lifestyle that you're trying to create um it's something that like i've spoken to my girlfriend a lot about and that like i'm i'm working to create that kind of thing um, and I've said to her, like, these are the years I need to sort of put in the grind now and, and make things happen. Uh, but then she'll come back to me and say, like, you know, this is what you're working to create, but you're actually doing the opposite because you're always working. Like, how do you how do you balance that? <laughs> Yeah, I have the same conversation with my girlfriend. It's like I, I was working every weekend for free up, like covering client issues. And then I hired an assistant that would cover all my weekends. But then it just freed up my weekends to work on other projects. So <laughs> it wasn't necessarily um, exactly as planned. I mean, yeah, you, you do have to find that balance. I, I do know a lot of entrepreneurs that all they do is work and, and they lose friends and they lose family and they don't actually take the chance to en enjoy life and I hope I don't ever go down that route. Um, the thing for me is, is work is fun. I enjoy doing it. It's not like I'm like, oh my God, I need to clock in right now. It's like, all right, this is exciting. What can I build next? Um, and I'm not necessarily doing a lot of the day-to-day um, grind that I, I hire a lot of people to do. Um, at the same time, I'm well aware that you need to balance it with um, time with your family and friends and girlfriend and, and all that stuff. And it's an ongoing battle I think every entrepreneur, sh every entrepreneur battles with. Yeah, what are some of the ways that you like to kind of uh, get away from work and, and uh, sort of recharge? Give my girlfriend my cell phone. <laughs> um, just any, really anything like in the wild. We actually just adopted a dog, which has been a big game changer in my life because nice. it kind of gives me an opportunity to be outside and go to the park and almost an excuse not to be inside because I find myself, if I'm just sitting in my condo with my laptop right there, I'm going to log into Skype and, and see what's going on. So um, really looking for other hobbies and other things that you can enjoy that will actually get you as far away from work as humanly possible. I think that's when you know you've become an entrepreneur, when you use your free time to log into Skype and not Facebook. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, so what is the what is the current sort of landscape of an Amazon business? Is it still a great opportunity for people to to get into now or is it like kind of oversaturated? Like what does that look like at the moment? I think it's a great opportunity. It's not a great opportunity if you just want to copy what other people are doing. 
Um, it was kind of the same mentality that when I went into Amazon, not many people were drop shipping and the people that were, weren't doing it my way. And I kind of figured it out myself. I didn't go and buy a $2,000 lesson and, and learn how someone else has done it because everyone else is buying the same lesson. And that's how things do get overcrowded. Mm-hmm. Um, so for me, I mean, Amazon's growing. Um, <laughs> they're, they're not going anywhere. There's, there's a huge customer base there looking to buy products. There's endless amount of products that you can come up with. What you need to do if you want to become an Amazon seller is figure out how to do it different, how to identify products in a different way, um, how to run your business in a proprietary way that um, not every expert in the world is currently teaching. And there's lots of new opportunities there. I mean, I have lots of clients that have come to me um, with nothing being like, Hey, I want to start an Amazon business. And I'm like, Hey, like I, I don't really help people that are, that are new. Like I, I partner with some people I can, I can introduce you to different people on there when you're ready to hire workers. And six months later, they come to me and they're like, Hey, I need a whole team. My business is growing out of control. I'm like, that's awesome. Like that's, that's great. Um, so I mean, there's definitely opportunity out there. And, and are you, obviously you've got free up. Um, are you still running an Amazon business as well? Yeah, I do. Um, it, it run. I kind of practice what I preach. It runs pretty much without me. Um, I am, in terms of day to day operations, I'm a little sick of it just because I've been doing it for over eight years and I can't like manually list products anymore. It, it's not as much fun as it was in year one, two, and three. Um, but I do run it. It, it it's kind of even keel. It's not. I'm not putting all my effort into expanding it. Um, it's kind of is what it is, and I've been focusing most of my time on free up. Yeah, and and what are the products that you sell in there right now? Yeah, it's it's been pretty much the same. Home goods, baby products, um, outdoor stuff, a lot of a lot of seasonal things like those big inflatables, um, stuff like that. And uh, if if I, if you don't mind me asking, you mentioned like figure out a way to do things differently than what all the experts are telling you. What are some of the ways that you took a different approach? Yeah, I, I built really strong relationships with different manufacturers that eventually gave me exclusivity. Um, and I think that's been a, a huge advantage for me. Um, I never went the private label route of building my own products, although that is a really good way to do it um, if, you're, if you're willing to put the time and effort to learn how to do it properly. Um, but for me, business is all about relationships and um, a lot of trial and error, a lot of contacting people, a lot of being rejected. Um, but when you find those good relationships that are mutually beneficial for everyone, those are the types of things that help you build the business long term. Amazing. Uh, Nathan, we... we coming up on time here is there anything else you think is worth mentioning um for people listening yeah so one of the cool things about free up is although we provide the workers we're also there to help you along the way whether you're someone that um could benefit from the book free up your business about getting your time back um or if you've never hired for the first time we have our free up blog and our online hiring mastermind group that we post a lot of great content um to help you make good hires and motivate your team and prevent turnover um we also right on the website we like to be as hands on as possible if you go to freeup.com with 3 e's you can book a meeting right with me i'd love to talk to you about your business if you mentioned this podcast, you get $1 off your first worker forever. Um, so definitely check us out. Check out our content. Um, and, and we'd love to hear your feedback. We're always trying to improve it for the end client. Amazing. And I'll link up all of those things we mentioned in the show notes. Um, it, it's, I think it's just really cool. We, we haven't had a guest kind of like you before, um, you know, sharing different ways for people to start their own business. And I think it's super cool. And I've uh, been really interested in looking into Amazon myself. So I've really enjoyed our chat. Uh, I do have some rapid fire questions at the end here. The first one is, well, you've only just turned 28. But the first one is, what do you wish you'd been told early in your 20s? I wish I had been told to focus on hiring people that are workaholics and that care as much as you did. When I first started hiring, I would hire anyone, anyone that wanted a job. I would hire my friends. Um, and although I had success, I would have had a lot more success if I had kept it, kept it away from my friends and focused on people that really wanted to be there. And don't speak to your family. <laughs> yeah. I never hired my family. I, I mean, I hired my sister like part-time one summer, but nothing crazy. So I never really went down that route. Yeah. What is the greatest opportunity for quarter lifers today? I'm sorry. What did you say? The greatest opportunity for quarter lifers today. 
Yeah, for me, the internet is just opening up so many possibilities from being able to quickly buy stocks to open up online businesses to creating um, or to networking with new people and staying in touch with old contacts. There's just so much opportunity there that even 10, 20 years ago, we didn't have. So for me, you really have to take advantage of those opportunities. If you go in with the mindset that you're going to work a corporate job and that you're going to do the exact same thing your parents did, I feel like you're falling behind. You really need to take advantage of the internet today. Mm. Before we wrap up here, Nathan, I've got one more question, but where can people go to get in touch with you and find out more about FreeUp? Yeah, so we're very easy to contact. I mentioned freeup.com with three E's. You can book an appointment right with me. You can add freeup.com on Skype. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, um, the Twitter, all those places, the online hiring mastermind group on Facebook. Make sure to join that um, and definitely check out that awesome content we're, content we're producing on the FreeUp blog and free up your business. You can buy on Amazon um, or right on our website. Amazing. Before I get to the final question, Nathan, I just want to take a second to acknowledge you for coming on today and for kind of creating a solution to a problem that you saw and no one else had solved and now you know helping other people create their own businesses via amazon and and hiring their own team um i think it's really cool and the final question that i have is what one thing can listeners do this week to start creating their own quarter life comeback yeah, start listing out things, whether it's different ideas for businesses you have. If you already have a business, start writing out tasks that you have that you can slowly take off your plate or different revenue streams um, or different people that you can work with or where, where the strengths and weaknesses are in your business. Um, if you have a business partner, one of the best things that my business partner and I did was we sat in a room together and we literally just went straightforward direct, hey, you're good at this, you're bad at this. And we just kind of went through a whole list and it helped us divide everything up um, and really write and really get it back on the same page. So wherever you are in your journey, try to write everything out and get everything as clear as and as unemotional as possible, as direct as possible on a piece of paper so you can take the step forward. Yeah, that's awesome. I think that even extends to not just business, um, but but any area really. Uh, cool. Nathan Hirsch, thank you so much for coming on the Quarter Life Comeback. Thanks for having me. So there you have it, guys and girls. That wraps up episode 68 of the Quarter Life Comeback podcast. And a big thanks to Nathan Hirsch for coming on once again and sharing a bit about uh, his expertise on starting a business and entrepreneurship and hiring a team and all that good stuff. If you like this one, please share it around with your friends on social media and shoot me a tweet at Brian Tier to let me know your biggest takeaway. For me, again, as we've heard from so many guests, it was just get started. If you wait too long, if you feel like your first version isn't embarrassing you've launched too late so get the minimum viable product out there test what's working what isn't and correct course as you go as always you can get the links and resources we mentioned in this episode at bryantier.com slash 068 and make sure you sign up at quarterlifecomeback.com to get all these episodes as soon as they go live once again a thanks to our sponsor today nomad accelerator which is the first in-person boot camp designed to teach you how to become a successful digital nomad and you can use the checkout code QLC uh, when you go to bootcamp.nomadaccelerator.com to get $250 off the ticket price. Thanks once again for joining me this week. And until next time, keep creating your quarter life comeback. Thanks for listening to the quarter life comeback. Get started today by visiting bryantier.com.